Jordan. All right, so here we go. Uh, we just wrapped up the homework check and now we're going into our lesson today. So I'm gonna present and let's do it. So this is called, we took chapter four and we cut out a lot of stuff and we tried to turn it down into least squares regression line and residuals, that was the first part. And now the second half is association and correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient is the fancy name for the R variable. When you do Desmos and type your stuff in a table, right? And it shows you the line of best fit equation. It also shows you R. That's the correlation coefficient. And if you remember from last week, that R value goes on a scale from negative one to one. And it essentially tells you how much in a line your points are. The closer to one, the more your scatter plot points are in a straight line. The closer to zero, the more random randomized your points are spread out on the graph. So here's a lot on this screen right here. So just take a look. Do not copy this down right here. This is in the math notes section from chapter two. So this is just a, like a recap right here of what I just described. That correlation coefficient, that's your R value. So as you can see in this picture, the graph on the left, which I'll circle right here so you can see it, this graph, ooh, let's try that again. That graph right there, what do you suppose to be the R value of that graph right there? Yeah. Yeah, very close to negative one is the answer, right? And it's never gonna be exactly negative one. But if your points are in a line and they're trending downwards, that means it's on the negative side because it's going down and they're very close to being in a line. So it's very close to that one. Let's hear from someone new, either at home or here in class about this middle graph. What do you think the middle graphs R value would be? You can just unmute yourself and talk. Uh, like negative 0 0.4 something, maybe? All right. So you're exactly right with the negative part. It would be negative because it's going down. Now, it's still somewhat flowing in a line. So I Yeah, so like 7? Yeah, I'd probably put it in the 6s or 7s. But again, that's I'm just trying to get you to grasp this. Your job won't be to guess what they are. I'm just trying to get you to have a, somewhat of a grasp on this. All right. So weak positive association. What does anyone out there think this R value would be for this graph? Ella? Yeah, you're correct. It's going to be positive because these points, although scattered, they are flowing upwards. Now, weak means it's low on that scale between 0 and 1. So give me something low on that scale because 0.8, that's pretty close to 1. And that would mean your, your points are very much in a line. Okay, 0.6 or lower, great. So we'll go with 0.6. Okay, all right. And then this screen also touches on what it means to be an outlier. An outlier is kind of like that point that doesn't follow the pattern. So there's an example of an outlier right there. Okay, all right. The closer you are to one, the stronger the association is. That means the more in line your points are. And frankly, that means the more predictable your equation is. Like if I'm predicting, hey, the bigger your shoe size, the taller you are, if those things are highly associated, then my line of prediction equation will be very much accurate, right? I wear size 13, I'm six foot three and a half. Whereas someone who wears size, I don't know, eight is probably not six, three and a half. They're probably a little bit shorter because shoe size and height tend to be associated. Are there outliers though? Do some people who are tall have small feet or some people who are shorter have large feet? Yeah, of course there are. But remember, we're studying two things that can be compared quantitatively. All right, so here's three more right here. What I want you to do both at home and here in the classroom is I want you to think about what do you suppose the R value would be for these three graphs right here and write down a guess in your notebooks. Let's call them graph one, two, and three from left to right.
guess is now. Yeah, it's just an estimate. It's not like an exact amount that we're aiming for. All right, so you got those out. Okay. All right. Now there are four things on this screen that are meant to be used to describe graphs. And so there are four things that you're going to want to write down here. You've got form, direction, strength, and outliers. Write down those four categories. You're going to describe every graph in this chapter by categorizing it in four different ways. The first category form has two options to choose from, linear or nonlinear. Either it's linear or it's nonlinear. And linear means a line, right? So either it looks like the data's in a line or it doesn't look like the data is forming a line. And I don't mean perfectly straight line, but let's be honest, the real world's not perfect. The data's not perfect. You're never gonna have a perfectly straight line when you're collecting data. The first option is direction. Direction is pretty simple. You're either increasing or decreasing from left to right. So write down those two options for direction. Let's write down these options, please. Direction, increasing or decreasing. Because what I'm giving you is the way to categorize and the vocab to speak it. Okay, strength has everything to do with your R value right now. So that R value we've been talking about, it can either be weak, moderate, or strong. And that all depends on your R value. Remember, we gave certain ranges to describe this. Do you recall what those were? I think we called like 0.9 when R is greater than or equal to 0.9, that's like strong. I should say absolute value because it could be negative 0.9, that's still strong. When your correlation coefficient was uh, between a couple options like uh, 0.7 and point all the way up to, but not including 0.9, I guess. You we'll probably call that moderate. And when your R value was just plain less than 0.7, you'd probably call that weak. Okay, the last category is yes or no. Are there any outliers? Yes or no? Where are they? So we'll categorize this first one as best we can as a class. Starting with the form. Okay, ready? What would you say the form is? And those of you uh, at home and here in school, you can type into the chat. What do you think the form is? Linear or nonlinear? Go ahead and type. Or you can just tell me. What do you think? For the graph number one we're doing together. Is graph number one linear or nonlinear? It's not a trick question, I promise you. Let me just say it out loud. Linear. Yeah, it's actually linear. And I want you to get a perfect line out of your head because you're never going to have that. Just think of the general flow of the data. Is it generally flowing in a line? Yes. So number one, so far the form is linear. So we would write linear. All right, let's go to direction. Increasing or decreasing, everyone? Decreasing. Strength. What do you suppose the R value would be for something like that? What do you think? Would you describe that? You don't have to come up with a number. You just have to come up with weak, moderate, or strong. Strong is very much in a line. Weak is basically scattered. So where does that leave this one? Yeah, we probably see the, the middle one, the moderate one, right? Moderate strength. Okay, and are there any outliers? You see any points that are like way off the general trend? No, right? No outliers. You did it. Great. You described the association. And there's nothing we're associating here. Normally, we'll have like shoe size and height. We'll be saying, what's the association between these two? Describe it. You describe these four things. 
Okay, try and answer numbers two and three right now. If you're here in class, you can turn and talk to each other, but write down what your responses are to two and three in your notebooks. Right now, uh, those of you at home, go ahead and give it a try. Come up with two and three, describe them. Describe their association by using those four categories. We're gonna give you a couple minutes to do so. I got till 12.58, so we got about nine minutes here. So here we go. You got two minutes to categorize graphs two and three. Go ahead right now. Two minutes, take two. Pause this recording. Okay, resuming our recording here, we ask students to respond to numbers two and three and categorize them. All right, so I'm going to go right from uh, people's responses from the class. So, would anyone like to respond to this? Four categories? What do you think? Um, I'll try, Max, but. I only have two of them. Yeah. Um, I said nonlinear, decreasing, unique, and has no outline. Yeah, you're right. Nonlinear, it's, it's kind of curved. So that's definitely not a line. You said decreasing, that's right. All right. Yeah, if you're not in a line, guess what? You're automatically going to be weak. And there are no outliers? Yeah. Nailed it. Good. Uh, no outliers. No. Oh, strength, moderate strength. Oh. That's all that was. Okay, let's go to number three. Number three, go ahead, everyone at home, type in your response uh, to number three. If you're here, you can do it too. You can just say it out loud. Let's describe graph three. Yep, top right corner, these are the numbers. And now graph three, I'm talking about the graph on the far right. Hey, Spencer, uh, Spencer Warner, can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. You just got to tell me if I'm, I'm talking too quietly or if I'm yelling. Just tell me. It's good. Getting some chat comments here. Okay, we have a consensus that this is linear. It is definitely increasing. And if we had to put a descriptor to this strength, most people said moderate. Yeah, I would tend to agree with this, be somewhere in between the moderate, maybe. And uh, no outliers, okay. All right, well done, very good. Okay, I'm gonna clear this screen and we're gonna want to take a look at what's next. Are there any questions before we do that? Yeah. So the, the strength scale is to essentially describe how much of a line that you are in. So automatically, if your shape of your graph is not a line or anything like it, it's curved, it's automatically going to be weak. Because your correlation coefficient, your R value, would be something very small because it's not in a line. And it's meant to describe a line. For number two, something probably 0.5 or below. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple clicks here to look at what's left in our notes here because I know we're running short, very short on time, 58. Okay, so we've got a correlation coefficient practice. In this practice, you would type this into Desmos and you'd see that R value come up again and talk about what it means to make a prediction. In this example right here, there it is, your classic comparison of shoe size and height. Again, you would type into Desmos, get that R value and explain what it means. So our closure would be to turn in this individual work to the paddle. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do that individually. So instead, what we're going to do is give you a quick reminder. Association is four things. It's form, direction, strength, and outliers. And we talked about how to describe each of those categories. The other part is, can I find and interpret the correlation coefficient? So I'm going to go to your book and go to a quick Desmos example just to point out where that is so you can see it. And then we'll wrap up here. Okay. So let me go to a new share here and go to your textbook. There we go. All right, so if I go in a problem like in your textbook, 
like in 423 or in 424. Okay, here's your shoe size problem. Can you all see the textbook screen I'm displaying right now, Spencer? Oh, uh, no, we're still on the slides. You're still on the slides, okay. Let me stop share and I'll reopen it right here. Share screen. Okay, so you should be in the textbook now, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. Remember, when you click on your Desmos calculator or whatever, if you log into your online book, that that correlation coefficient value is in the same location as your least squares regression line information. And so if I click on this first one, this e-tool, as I scroll down here, there's my correlation coefficient right there, that R value located right in the same box as your other stuff. So that will automatically tell you what that is. Okay, I'm gonna stop this recording. Bye-bye.